For a clear understanding of electrical circuits, we first need to know about the following concepts energy, voltage, and power. If you can follow this made up story, you'll have grasped what the energy is, what energy represents. Right, so here's how it goes. Your car's engine has just died in a traffic jam. Soon the amount of exhaustion you feel after having pushed your car along the road towards a lay-by is because some of your body's energy was consumed. The energy you lost got converted into kinetic energy through the action of pushing your car. But with the car now rolling along, it soon reaches the lay-by you then have to jump in the driving seat and yank the handbrake on to avoid hitting the kerb. Now the energy of your muscles initially gave to the car to get it rolling is now converted into heat through friction by the disc brakes bringing the car to a halt. So the energy then is the work done that makes things happen which can be converted to different forms, in this case chemical energy from your body into kinetic energy of the rolling car and then heat energy from the friction of the disc pads. Now engineers and physicists describe energy more formally as work and it's equal to F times D where F is the force and D is the distance. In words that says the work done or energy used equals for the force applied over the distance moved. So energy is simply then in words the work done. In electrical circuits, we need to move not cars, but charges from A to B, which also requires a bit of energy or work done. Now, with charges, we have learned that opposites attract, while like charges repel, as shown here. Opposites attract, the like charges are repelling. Now, with charges, uh, most objects are of neutral charge, so most objects in the world don't have any charge they've got the same number of positive and negative charges hence no net charge but if we use up some energy by doing work to move positive charges away from negative charges a force of attraction will then be felt between these separated charges batteries are constructed in such a way as this with batteries we have an internal physical separation of equal numbers of charges positive charges appearing at one terminal with the negative charges at the other terminal. The battery has potential energy for all of the charges that, are, that have been separated, which is hence available for us to do work, e.g. light a bulb, run a computer, etc. etc. So with a battery, we have a fixed amount of energy available per charge. We describe it as having so many joules, which is the SI unit of energy, per coulomb, which is... Uh, a standard measure of charge being equivalent to a very large number of electrons. So we describe it as having so many joules per coulomb available to do work with. When we talk about battery voltage, we're talking about how many joules of energy is available for every coulomb of charge that could flow through a circuit attached to its terminals. Voltage equals joules per coulomb and can be written V equals J over C, where joules per coulomb. So whenever you see, think, or talk about voltage, always, always say to yourself, voltage is joules per coulomb, and remember what that means. For example, if I have a 12 volt battery with a negative terminal A and a positive terminal B, what I actually have is the potential for 12 joules of energy to do useful work for every coulomb of separated charge that moves between these two terminals. So if we have a length of wire with each end connected to each terminal, this would release 12 joules for every coulomb of charge that flowed through the wire. Charges would keep flowing until the energy of the battery ran out, but never connect a battery in this way as the large amount of heat produced across the battery's internal resistance will damage it as well as drain it quickly. This is called shorting the battery and should always be avoided. So this section here is showing how we've shorted the battery out here and showing the steam, showing the battery's internal resistance getting very hot. This then is all that 
voltage is, it's potential energy per coulomb of charge between two points in a circuit. A battery is an energy storage device. Besides batteries, there are other sources that can provide voltage between two points. Electric generators, solar cells, etc. Now let's connect a wire between the terminals of this 12 volt battery, but this time with a light bulb. So here we're going to use a light bulb. So instead of shorting the battery, the light bulb will now convert the 12 joules of energy directly into heat for every coulomb that passes through the bulb. Current has the SI unit called the ampere or amp. So a high number of amps is the same as a high number of coulombs of charge that pass through a circuit per second. But try and avoid the blind use of the terms current or amps when you're beginning to learn about circuits. It's better to, to, to just refer to rate of charge flow, current, always as coulombs per second as that is more descriptive and will enable the concept of current to embed better in, in, in your brain. For example, instead of saying the current is 2 amps, instead say in your head the rate of charge flow is 2 coulombs per second. OK, it's a, it's a longer sentence but it conveys exactly the same correct meaning and when you're learning, having a clear understanding is more important. So let's say in our bulb circuit that 0.5 coulombs per second is the rate of charge flow current so if we leave our circuit switched on for say five seconds how much energy will be consumed by the bulb and what is the rate of this energy consumption e.g. the rate being the number of joules per each second okay you pause this video and see if you can answer both these questions that I've shown here on the on the on the slide I'll then go through them. To answer these two questions, we'll do this in a very methodical but slow way. But I just want to go through all the logic very carefully. Firstly, we know that our battery provides a fixed 12 joules of energy per each coulomb that flows, and that our rate of charge flow is 0.5 coulombs passing through every second. So that means over five seconds, the total number of coulombs that pass through is 5 times the rate, 0.5, which is 5 times 0.5 equals 2.5 coulombs. So, since the battery's energy per coulomb is 12 joules, that multiplied by 2.5 coulombs is 12 joules per coulombs times 2.5 coulombs equals 30 joules in total. So that is the first answer. To get the rate of energy consumption, we know that 12 joules of energy is consumed, converted to heat, for every coulomb of charge that passes, and that the rate of charge flow is 0.5 coulombs per second. This means 12 joules per coulomb multiplied by 0.5 coulombs per second is the rate that energy in this circuit is consumed at which is our answer, being 6 joules per second. This is then the rate of work done, or rate of energy consumption. It's more commonly called power. So to repeat that main point again, as it's important, joules per second is power. And since energy is the work done, then we say that power is the rate of doing work. Power has been given its own SI unit, called the watt. So, the above power of 6 joules per second is the same as saying the rate of doing work is 6 watts. Again, when you're learning, always, always mentally exchange the unit watts with joules per second and say to yourself, this is the rate of doing work where work is energy. This relationship can be written as P equals V times I, where power is P, V is voltage, joules per coulomb, and I is the current of charge, current or charge flow, coulombs per second. Once you get a feel for power watts, energy joules, and current coulombs per second, then instead of having to go through all the above logical steps, you can just use the formula P equals V times I, which is far quicker. But it's very useful in your understanding to go through all these logical steps 
with a basic example as we've done here, i.e. a complete detailed walkthrough in words. Do that at least once or twice uh, until you start getting a feel for what these concepts mean. Okay, you could even replay this video a few times and uh, search the internet for articles that describe the meaning of voltage power and energy with regards circuits. Do that until you fully understand these concepts. Uh, when you have that understanding, the rest of your studies in electronics will be an order of magnitude easier. Anyway, that's this video. I'm going to try and uh, go through these concepts individually with some shorter videos as I, I go through this uh, series of tutorials so that we can get um, a bit of a quicker video for each one. I uh, hope this has been useful though. This really kind of covered a lot in just one video. Maybe not a good idea but uh, I think it's possibly is good to see them all in one go like this and then we'll uh, cover them all individually uh, in some shorter videos. Thank you.